Hey everybody, Sam with Troops Mowing. I'm looking a little dirty, a little sweaty. Just got out of the field with the guys, but I wanted to hop on the whiteboard and talk about how you can establish your pricing. I know that we're all about to head into our peak season here pretty soon within the next few weeks to the next month. Uh, so this would be a good opportunity if you don't, uh, if you're not fully comfortable with how to establish your pricing, you can use this video as a tool to audit your current pricing, uh, or even if you're a complete beginner and you want to determine how to uh, set up your pricing for your area and for what works best for you, I believe that this video is going to be perfect. So uh, let's get into this and I hope you guys learned something. So how I want to break this down is uh, I really want you guys to focus mainly on this portion of the screen right here. Um, I've got my cheat sheet behind me over here and a little bit over there as well so that I'm not in front of a calculator the entire time. Uh, but how I want to break this down is I'm going to give two different scenarios on how to establish your pricing. Um, so the first scenario that I'm going to talk about is if you are an owner of a company and you have two full-time crews uh, out working for you, meaning you're acting as the general manager and you're completely out of the field and you have four different employees uh, working for you in the field. I'm also basing this information um, to, save, to save time on this video under the assumptions that you already have some of your numbers figured out, meaning you know exactly how many square feet per minute um, that you can mow and you've also done your secondary research on the competitor pricing within your market. So let's hop right into it. So first off, we'll look over here on this side and we'll talk about if you were that owner with four employees out in the field and you're kind of handling all of the sales, all of the estimating, all of the computer work. Uh, the secondary research that you pulled previously to establishing your pricing is let's imagine that you live on a property in the serviceable area size of your property, meaning just the grass, um, just, just the actual um, spots on your property that will be serviced does not include the size of your house is 3,500 square feet. You call up to a bunch of different customers and you say, hey, I'm just a homeowner looking to get my lawn serviced, really curious on your pricing. Uh, it's, not, it's not unethical to do that. You're just simply doing your secondary research. Um, three different companies came out and gave you a quote. On the low end was 25. On the middle of the field was 35. And the high end was 50. Uh, $50 to mow your loan. So you already have your secondary research. You already know how much square feet you mow per minute. Uh, so now let's kind of get into the pricing and see how you stack up and see how you should establish your pricing. So first off, you want to determine your expenses before you can even figure out your pricing, right? The basis of business is revenue minus expenses equals profit. So if you don't know your expenses, you're probably not going to be able to, to determine your revenue and definitely won't be able to, to determine your profit. So the different types of expenses that are made up within a lawn mowing service is you have your fixed costs, meaning whether you're on a property or not, that's going to stay the same. You have your variable costs, meaning that only changes if you are on a property or not. You have the salary that you want to pay yourself, which is going to be overhead in this instance. And you also have the labor um, associated with completing the job. The numbers that I'm using here, I'm, I'm assuming that there's going to be 18 working days in a month. And for this scenario where you have four people out in the field, two crews, I'm assuming 40 lawns can be done in a day, given the, the property size that we're talking about here. So some of the fixed costs that you might have, um, your salary technically is a fixed cost, but I'm outlining that separate here. You'll have your storage, your trucks, uh, your truck payments, if you're financing a mower, uh, if you have an office space, Wi-Fi, electricity. Uh, for this example, I am using um, $3,400 per month for fixed costs. And if you were to break that down into per day and into per lawn, what that means is you would effectively be having to pay $4.72 per lawn that is being finished um, just to recover your fixed costs. You're not making money off your fixed costs. You simply want to get that recovered. For the variable costs, what I've found is, um, so, so the variable costs that I really calculate for my operations is you have your gas and you also have your credit card processing fees. 
So for us, we're paying 2.75% per charge of a card, as well as 30 cents. Uh, and if you also take into consideration the gas, meaning we take up, we, we calculate all of our gas on a monthly basis and divide that by how many visits. Um, and we kind of come out with a safe bet around eight and a half percent of the price we charge the customer is pretty close to how much our variable costs are. Since that's a percentage and we don't have our cost to the customer yet, we'll revisit that in a second. For your overhead salary, I'm assuming that for this instance, you're paying yourself $60,000 per year. Uh, if you were to break that down post tax, you're going to be making or you'll be having to pay $55,550 per month. Using this example, 18 working days in a month, 40 lawns in a day. That means to recover your salary expense, you would have to pay, you would have to charge $7.63 per lawn to recover your salary. Now for labor, we use uh, P4P, which was established by Mike Andes. I'm sure if you guys are watching this video, I'm sure you guys are fairly familiar with him. He's, uh, he's such an awesome person and he's definitely, um, I would say a genius in this space. So basically without getting too much into the weeds of P4P, we give our guys 33% of the revenue that they bring into the company. And we also, I'm located here in Texas. I don't know where it is where you guys are at, but we also have to pay roughly 11% in payroll taxes. So if I break that down, obviously this is dependent on how much we're gonna charge the customer, which we'll get to that in a second. Um, you all, once you have all this information, you can figure out your profit. So what I like to do up here is obviously we're going to, we're going to feel like we have a lot of value that we're providing to our customers. Um, so you're not going to like charge on the low end, right? You're going to have confidence in what kind of services you provide and the quality. That means you're going to charge on the high end. So if you do this math, you know, you can mow 250 square feet per minute with a two person crew. And for the average property size you're doing, in this instance, if you figured out the math, it would take you 14 minutes to mow that property. So in this instance, this person, this company that gave you this charge, they're making about $83.33 per, I say man hour, but you'll say per billable hour um, for their company. And obviously you're going to think that you're better than them. So let's assume that we're going to charge $85 per hour um, per billable hour per person. So we are going to charge 85 per hour and you also are going to want to make sure that you have minimums set in place because in this instance, as you'll see in a second, the hourly rate for 14 minutes or, or the, the price you would charge the customer for 14 minutes is going to be like 40 bucks. Um, but if you have minimum set in place, that means any property size underneath that minimum, you're making extra profit, you're making a higher effective hourly rate, um, which obviously is beneficial to the bottom line. So in this instance, our minimum, since this company is charging 50, why can't we? So I'm gonna charge this customer, I'll just put it up here, $50 to mow their lawn, $50 per cup. So now I can sit here and I can do the math. 8.5% for a variable cost to recover gas and credit card processing fees. 8.5% of 50 is $4.25. Back to labor, we charge 33%, um, and we also have to do an 11% payroll tax. So if there's two people on a job and adding that payroll tax, that means the labor that we are going to have to pay out for this job is $15.00. And 35 cents so like I said earlier I'm sure you guys are already tracking how you can find your profit is revenue minus expenses is equal to your profit so our revenue minus all of our expenses is equal to profit and then um, oh excuse me I got the wrong number again. sorry about that so for labor in this instance it's eighteen dollars and 32 cents my apologies I actually wrote down the profit so this is $15.35, and if you were to do the math on that, that's roughly a 30% profit margin, fantastic. The reason why that's high is because, as you'll see here in a second, your effective hourly rate is higher than your 
uh, hourly rate that you're putting out as $85 per hour. Um, so any property size underneath that, you're just gonna make a bunch of profit, right? Um, typically a good profit that you wanna shoot for, depending on what you have going on, if you're solo, it'll be a lot higher, uh, would be 20% in this instance. For solo, you probably wanna shoot for like 65 to, to 75%. So our effective hourly rate in this instance, uh, what you want to do is we know that $50 is our minimum. It took us 14 minutes. Um, that means if you were to run that math, that means your effective hourly rate for this long is $107.14. You're billing the customer at $85 per hour, but due to your minimum charge, it would be, it comes out to $107.14. Um, the total profit, I'll put it down here. And sorry, I'm talking a little fast. I'm a little, I get pumped up on numbers and um, I'm just excited to get this video out. So if I'm moving too quick, just let me know in the comments to slow it down on the next one. Uh, so profit per hour, how you can figure that out is like I said, you have, um, you have two crews out in the road and they're doing 20 lawns in a day. Um, if you were to break that number down where they're doing $50, 14 minutes, da 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 you would get a number. But that's at 100% efficiency. So let's calculate that at 70% efficiency. So if you were to take that number where um, there's, 60, there's 60 minutes in an hour and you're doing 14 minutes a lawn on average, you'll get something. And you times that by 70% and you'll get three. So that means each crew is doing, can do three lawns per hour at a 70% efficiency. Meaning you have two crews on the road, you have six crews in total, each lawn is getting you this in profit. So if you talk, multiply this by six, you are making $92.10 in profit per hour. So if that is something, and this is, this is after you pay yourself and your expenses and everything. Um, so now I'm gonna get on this side and talk about the solo operations for this um, and what that looks like. There's no right or wrong answer. So if you wanna be, a, um, if, you, if you like to manage people and you're a good leader and that's something that it, uh, draws you in, this could be a good option. But what comes with this is a lot of uh, mental fatigue. On the solo side of things, you don't have as much mental fatigue, but you have a lot more physical fatigue. It really is completely up to you and your preferences. So let's hop over here to solo. Let's see if you guys can still see me. So we're just gonna, we kind of talked about all of our uh, prerequisites in, in figuring out these pricing, so I don't have to uh, revisit that again. Um, but for our fixed costs, if you're a solo, if you're a solo, you're gonna have a lot less fixed costs, right? Because two person crew, you have two trucks, two mowers, uh, more variable, well, let's not talk about variable costs, just fixed costs. Uh, you're probably not gonna have an office space. Uh, you're definitely not going to have um, a huge shop space. You might even just store it in your garage, but you're still gonna have a software. You're still gonna have, if you're financing a truck, if you're financing mowers, you're still gonna have some fixed expenses. So I'm going on the high end here um, just because I don't wanna sell you a dream. Um, so in this instance, I put that our fixed monthly expenses for a solo operator is $1,550 per month. We're gonna use the same example where we're working 18 days uh, out of the month. And in this instance, I'm assuming that a solo operator, given the property size, can do 13 lawns in a day. So if we break that fixed cost down into a per lawn basis doing 13 in a day, the fixed cost to recover is going to be $6 and 62 cents per hour. Variable costs are 8.5%, and we're still gonna go in the instance that this is our minimum. It's gonna take you longer, it's not gonna take you 14 minutes because you were working with two people on that side, and that's just yourself. So it's gonna take a little bit longer, um, but regardless, 8.5% of 50 is still going to be $4.25. Now you still want to pay yourself, this is completely up to you, this number can change quickly, um, but if you still want to pay yourself $60,000 per year, um, you're going to have to do this number. This pricing can all be changed, right? It depends on your goals. So if you know, hey, I need to make $60,000 per year, you can figure out your pricing by reverse engineering it. 
Or you can say, hey, I'm gonna charge this, and whenever I'm making profit, that's what I'm making profit, and that's what I pay myself. To each, to each their own. In this instance, I'm just gonna say, hey, you wanna pay yourself 60 grand a year. This is what you have to do to, to make that happen. So, in this instance, if you break that down, 18 days in a month, 13 lawns per day, uh, to recover your salary needs, you're gonna have to collect $23.50 um, per, per lawn. One second. My apologies, I thought I thought I was getting a phone call. Uh, $23.50 per lawn. Now the labor in this side um, is really just going to be your salary, right? If you had somebody else with you, you would take that 33% and you would divide that by two since you're technically the other person. But in this instance, the labor is this, right? So I'm just gonna put zero dollars. So now what we can do is we can take our revenue minus our expenses to get our profit. Ironically enough, profit is relatively similar um, to that of what you have going on over here. Um, only thing is, is in this instance, this was taking you 14 minutes per long. And I put for this instance, this is taking 35 minutes per long. Now, if you're super efficient, obviously this can change your pricing. Um, you can also crunch all these numbers. I know I'm not giving you the exact formulas for each number, um, but I have faith that you guys are smart enough just to take exactly what I'm doing here and kind of figure out how I'm getting these numbers. So to figure out our effective hourly rate, and we're also going to calculate our profit per hour. Can you all see that down there? Yep. To get our effective hourly rate at a 70% efficiency, what we need to do is we need to take 60 minutes divided by 35 minutes, multiply that by 70%, and you get 1.2 lawns per hour is what you can do at 70% efficiency. Now, if we're making $15.63 in profit per lawn, and we multiply that by 1.2, that means our profit per hour is going to be $18.75. Um, quite different than what you have going on over here, but that's why, I mean, you're still getting paid the same salary, just the amount of money going into the bank's profit is drastically different. Um, and that just comes down to your preference and what do you want out of the company? You should run this company. The company should never run you. Uh, please remember that. It took me a little bit to figure that out, um, but it's, it's just giving me such peace of mind knowing that, hey, I have control over this company and I have, I have a partner as well, Dylan, uh, a business partner, Dylan, um, he also has control over this company. So we need to run the company. The company should never run us. So you got to figure out what's best for you and make it happen. So that is how you can figure out your pricing for your lawn care company. I really hope this helps. Uh, you can kind of play with these numbers as you see fit. If you want to make more money in salary, by all means, adjust it. Um, if you just kind of want to take what's left over in, as part of your salary, by all means, adjust it. Uh, this is not a. This is not the only way to figure out your pricing. There's countless other ways. This just is what works best for me and for my brain. Um, if you guys agree, let me know. If you guys have a better way or a different way of calculating your prices, I would also love to know um, because I just want, I, you know, knowledge is power. And so uh, I think this we have had a have a great community going uh, in terms of the lawn care industry. Countless YouTubers, countless people sharing their insights and it's just super awesome and i hope to be one of them to you guys so uh whatever you guys have to let me know let me know in the comments i'm excited to read them i try to do my best to respond to them um, but regardless have an awesome 2023 season i'm super excited to hear how all your guys's goals went did you guys accomplish your ambitions what happened uh, we'll obviously reconvene at the end of the year and i'm super excited to hear all of that so thank you and enjoy your day mm -hmm.